What's going on guys, Shane here. Today we're going to be talking about the double end bag, how to use it as a beginner, and also some advanced tricks so that you can have some fun with it. Alright, so let's talk about the very basics. Installing the double end bag and how tight should the ropes be. This is actually very loose, you can see how much it moves around. The tighter that the ropes are, the less movement, the easier it is for you to punch it because if you punch to the center, you're most likely going to hit the back. Another thing that you can do is hold weights in your hands because if you go slower, you're actually more likely to hit it. Okay, also, I have these weights on either side, they're just two pound weights, they can catch it. So I have a wider fist now. Another thing that you can do too is just wear boxing gloves when getting started. It's more difficult, it's more challenging to do it bare fist or with MMA gloves than it is with boxing gloves, okay? Now, once we get started, all we're gonna do is just a one, two, one, two. All right, stay very close to the bag and don't try to catch the bag necessarily. Try to redirect it to the other fist, right? I'm not punching completely straight. These aren't correct punches, but what I'm doing here is just finding a rhythm, okay? Back and forth, left, right. Once I feel comfortable with this, I can start backing up and getting full extension in my punches. A little more challenging because now my fists have to travel a further distance. I have to make sure I'm more precise and more accurate with my punches. Also, it depends on where I hit the bag. If I hit the center of the bag, I have more control of it. If I slip off to the side, it's gonna go in a direction that I don't want it to, okay? Now, once we start adding hooks to the mix, now this is where it gets more challenging. What I teach beginners and what I did when I first started was after I throw my lead hook, it's gonna go left and right now, right? So if it's moving left and right, it's hard for me to time it to where I can hit it with a straight punch. So let's hit it with another hook or what I like to do is a back fist. So we're hitting one twos, one twos, one twos, and then I hit it with the hook, come right back with my back fist that can steady it, and then I can go back in my one two. So it's like this, one two, one two, one two, hook, tap, one two, one two, one two, one two, back to the straights again, okay? If I do a strong right hand, what I like to do, again, it's probably gonna be a little wild, is go helmet guard. So now we work our defense a little bit. So it's one two, one two, one two, strong two, helmet guard, it steadies it a little bit. Now I'm going back to my one twos, hook, back fist, one two, strong cross, right back, pop, pop, okay, and continue from there. Now, I neglected using the double end bag growing up, but as of late, I've been using it a lot and I've realized how effective of a tool it really is. I don't wanna go as far as saying that a heavy bag develops bad habits, but it can. If you just stand in front of it and you just throw 100% into each punch, how realistic is that to a real fight? That's not gonna happen. Your, your opponent's not gonna let you just stand in front of them and throw 100 punches in a row, right? You need to work your head movement, which you can with this. You need to work your defense, which you can with this. Okay, and you have to work your accuracy. If I throw a big punch on this, right, it's all over the place, now I try to catch with another big punch, it's not likely I'm gonna hit it, right? It really helps focus on your precision and on your accuracy, right? Think about it, the biggest punch in the world doesn't matter if you don't land it. This will help you be more precise. And there can be times when you throw a really big punch. Let's say your opponent's up against the ropes or uh, they're staggered or something like that. But leading up to that, you just wanna touch them. You wanna make sure the punches land, right? And then I put a little extra power into it when I know it's going to land on the back. All right, talking about more advanced tricks and combos, one that I've been working on that I really like is to faint jab, throw the cross and catch it with a parry to steady the bag, then we throw a lead head kick. So it looks like this, a fake cross catch and kick. All right, precision is key, but you also have to time the rhythm of the bag, all right? Control it, you tell it where to go. Don't try to catch it midair. Another one that I like to do is punch to the rope below it, like we're going to the body. You don't always have to aim for the head in the fight. You don't always have to aim for the bag on the double end, all right? So we can go to the rope and get that movement going. It's kind of hard once it's moving around, but also just make sure of your angle, right? If it's coming directly at you, then you're probably gonna hit it. You just have to reach for it a little bit more. If I go to the side of it and it's going this way, no, now it's a little bit harder, okay? So change your angle up, work your footwork. So now you can go jab to the body, cross to the head, and then slip to the outside. Maybe come back with a hook. It's gonna be troublesome though because of your angle. So it's jab, cross, hold, and hook, okay? All right guys, mix it up, have fun with it. You can work your kicks, you can work your knees, you can work your elbows. I like posting out and catching it and then bringing the bag right back, boom, into my elbow. It's one of my favorite ones to do. All right guys, thanks for watching. I just wanna wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Leave a comment below and let me know what you're thankful for. Me, I'm thankful for my wife, my dog, and my house. The simple things, that's what's important. And all of you guys, all of the subscribers, we're almost at one million. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips. Self-defense for the underdog.